glad you can join us in our service tonight. I'm Patrick. I'm one of the pastors here serving with Jojit and Job, who's our campus director here in Victory Fort. And so I'm usually based there in the 6 p.m. and in the 8 p.m. So to those people who are watching on live stream, Patrick Po. That's my name. So we are actually starting a new series tonight and the next two, two Sundays, two more weeks. So basically three weeks called Renew. And when we talk about Renew, that's actually one of the facets of the gospel is that we can be renewed day after day when we have Jesus in our lives. Uh, there's no such thing as a stagnant Christian, but even if you've been a Christian for a long time, we can experience the newness of life, newness of things. God doesn't want us to live boring, stale, stuck in our rut lives. He wants us to experience the new things that can only come from Him. Person A has been working in a company for quite some time now, for, for years, I can say. And one morning, the boss calls him and... He didn't, doesn't really know the reason why the boss calls him one morning, only to hear that the boss said he's fired. After working years in a company and being fruitful and productive there, all of a sudden, without any notice, the boss tells him, you're terminated, you're fired. For some reason, the company was retrenching and they're hiring younger people. And so he found out his job for many, many years it's faced out. Person B, who's actually a businessman, applied a loan in a bank and hoping that this million, I forgot the exact amount, maybe probably two million pesos of loan will help his business gain momentum and bring his business to the next level. So he's actually expectant of receiving this loan from his bank so that he can continue furthering and making his business grow. After a few weeks of waiting, the bank says it's declined. Expectations broken to pieces. Person B, a single woman, or single man rather, was actually courting a woman for, why are you smiling? Why some single men are smiling? I'm not talking about you was actually courting a woman. The first few weeks was actually A-OK. -okay. But then after a few months, two, three months of dating, the woman makes a decision and tells to the man, I don't see you as my future partner. Person D. Actually, a couple. Every time a cu cu this couple attends a family reunion, for some reason, this couple is looked down on by their relatives. Every time this couple goes to this family reunion, they don't receive the, the expected and normal hospitality that should come from the clan. And for some reason, we don't know what, it's they're just there on the sides and not actually shown hospitality. But when you look at the other relatives, they actually show hospitality and special treatment to other people in the family. Person E. Pang ilang letter na ba? Person E, this woman is actually married for five years now. First three years was okay. Didn't really see it coming, but after in the fifth year of marriage, the guy said he wants it cut. He wants it broken. He wants a separation. He wants annulment for some reason. Weeks, the, the wife was actually shocked. And then a week after, he, she found out what's worse. The guy is actually dating someone else. And then two weeks after, the guy decides to live with that mistress and abandons this wife that he's been married to for five years. Person F. The woman is going through a middle child syndrome. For some reason, she feels she's not loved by the parents, being a middle child. But 
She sees a favoritism in the eldest and in other siblings, but not her unintentionally probably, or sometimes intentionally, she feels neglected and not loved by her parents. The last person I want to share is actually a person who finds out that when he's, this person, the, the person is a she, she finds out when she's in her, in her 20s, she's an adopted child. She realizes the parents, so-called parents who took care of her, are not actually the parents, the real parents, the biological parents. And so she feels disappointed, feels sad, and don't know what to do. A month after, she goes on a quest to find out her real parents. She sees it on Facebook. She stalks the parents, and for some reason, miraculously, she discovers the address goes to the residence of that parent of the of her parents to mimbre in tagalog the dad comes out but the dad deliberately doesn't want to acknowledge that she is one of her kids among all the persons from person a to person g that i just mentioned what do you think is the common denominator among these people that all of us can relate, it's actually rejection. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, we all experienced rejection. Some of us may not have experienced, but let me tell you, you will experience it. All of us, every human being who lives in this world, will experience this pain and this sickness called rejection. The only difference among us is that, aside from different situations, the only difference is the levels of rejection we will face. Some of us, I haven't even mentioned a lot of things, some of us even applied for a job for many, many times in these companies, all that we applied to rejected us. Or maybe it's actually uh, trying to pursue someone and then, just like what I said, and it, for some reason, you face rejection. Different levels of rejection, ladies and gentlemen, but we will all experience this. In fact, a lot of us have experienced this sickness and this pain and whatever you want to call it, syndrome called rejection. The effects of rejection is actually deadly. Because number one, it affects and gives us a painful memory. Every time you face a rejection, some of us maybe tried out for a basketball team, varsity team, you got cut, not cut like that. You were removed from the team. You weren't accepted. It gives us a painful memory. That's the danger of rejection. The second one, if you don't know, we don't know how to deal with rejection, it hurts actually our emotions. Connected po lahat yun eh. The brain, the memory, the data bank, the very, the, the wherever that house is, what, kind, what the situation was that, what situation was that, the date, the time, was it raining, was it sunny, every detail you'll remember it. But not only that, it's not just the memory, it gives you a wounded feeling. The emotions are actually affected. Maybe you came here, you're battling with depression now. It's still fresh. The way, the way I'm speaking it to us now, explaining this rejection. Yung nararamdaman mo yung sugat. Parang in this, in, uh, let me speak in Tagalog, ang hapdi ng sugat. Not only that. What's worse is it will affect you spiritually. When we start having these wounds in our mental, in our intellect, in our brains, in our emotions, it also affects us spiritually in the way we relate with God. That's why there are some people when we are so deeply wounded in rejection, we start doubting the existence of God, we start doubting the character of God, and we start questioning if God is really good. That's the danger of rejection. And so my question to us, talking about the series Renew, and so I want to use the word renew for the sake of being loyal to the brand. Can our lives still be renewed? That's what I want us to talk about today for the next 20 to 25 minutes. 
Is there still hope for every human being who has been wounded in this sickness called rejection? Can we still experience the newness of life? Can we still live a life free from rejection? Can we live a life that, that can actually, a life that's free from pain and free from this thing? Or if it's all the three components, I'm not doing sign of the cross, if all these three components are affected, where is it? Yeah, the intellect, the emotions, the memory, the emotions, and my relationship with God. If it's all affected, I mean, in the midst of all things, this is the question. Can we be renewed? Can we experience newness of life? Because if we cannot relate to this, then there's no point in a little bit Parang hindi mo dama yung worship songs, the songs that we sing. We sang Amazing Grace, we sang about, I'm accepted, I'm not gonna sing it, I'm accepted, and now all these, we cannot relate to these songs. We're, it will have a hard time relation, relating to the worship songs if we cannot even experience the renewal that can only come from God in the midst of a broken world called rejection. There's this interesting story that I want us to exegete tonight with me of the story of Jesus who actually encountered or maybe the woman encountering Jesus who that we can all relate to. This woman is also rejected and I'll explain that what kind of rejection that he did she really go through. This is actually a story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Let's look at that. John chapter 4, I'm using English Standard Version. John chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. Jesus left Judea and departed again for Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. Give you a background. I'll use my hand so that we can have a visual of the map of Israel. So Judea is here. This is where Jesus is. Not literally. I'm just... Jesus I'm just this is Judea. This is Samaria. And he's headed for above Samaria, which is Galilee. The culture back then, Jews do not pass from Judea to Samaria. Samaria is not probably a notorious town, but it's a disdain town. They don't go there. They don't mingle. Jews do not mingle with people from Samaria. We call it Samaritans. So what the Jews will do, if they travel to Galilee, just like Jesus, the Jews will use not Edsa, but will use C5. So that they will not pass through Samaria. The interesting about this story is Jesus deliberately did not use C5. Okay, some of you will call me heretics now. But Jesus went straight and so he did not mind passing through Samaria. That's Jesus. Among all the Jews, the Jews will not go to Samaria because they, they disdain that town, they disdain these people, but Jesus didn't. So he went straight, faster. That's what Waze said. <laughs> so he came to a town of Samaria and called Sikar near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Remember Joseph? So this is where talk, the Joseph we talk, well, talked about last week. This is the same Joseph that this was mentioned in this verse. But in verse 6, Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, weary, tired us from his journey. Now Jesus gets tired. I thought he's God. Yeah. 100% God, 100% man. So in this story, he's clothed in a human being, so he gets tired. Okay? But he's still 100% God, 100% man. So from time to time, when Jesus was here on earth, he gets tired. Because he's in a human body. Jesus, weary, he sat on the well. It was about the sixth hour. When you say sixth hour, that's 12 lunchtime. A woman, this is the woman I want us to talk about because in this story, Jesus encountering this woman, woman encountering Jesus. A woman from Samaria, a Samaritan woman, came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Okay, who starts the conversation? It's Jesus. And where is Jesus now? In a notorious place or disdained, looked down on place called Samaria. Why would be the Savior and the Son of God, the creator of the universe, would take time 
to stay in this place that is not really pleasing in the eyes of the Jews. Verse 8, For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food, went to bread, talk Israel branch, and the Samaritan woman said to him, okay, the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samari Samaritans because, again, the culture is, uh, it's years of division between Samaritans and the Israelites. I don't have time to explain the cause and the reason, but it was for many, many years, they've been, there's a rift between them. It's looked down on. It's a race, the Samaritan woman is looked down on. It's double whammy. You know why? Because he, she's a woman. And in culturally, not biblical, biblically, culturally, women are second-class citizens. But biblically speaking, they're not. So Jesus breaks a, is breaking a cultural norm here. This is a side note. If you're a part of the feminist movement, let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus uplifts the value of women. Amen, women? God knows your value. Jesus will not talk, a Jew will not talk to a Samaritan, number one, and number two, a woman as double whammy. They're both double whammy rejected. But yet Jesus takes time, sits on the well, and then starts a conversation with this woman. So Samaritan woman, if you feel rejected, probably let's do an asoko. Um, uh, sige, international. CSI. <laughs> Investigative report on this woman. This woman is actually worse. Rejected. She did not choose it. But because her race is a Samaritan, she is automatically rejected. Because she did not choose her gender, but God did. She's a woman, That's, that adds trouble to it. Two times rejected. But yet, one Jew, who's not just a regular human being, but a God, a Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, makes time, takes time, deliberately chooses that woman. So he can strike a conversation and build relationship with this woman. Amazing. Can we experience renewal of life? When we look at this story, it gives me a glimpse of hope. That even if there's majority of people in your office reject you, or maybe your relatives reject you, or maybe you've experienced rejection from different sectors of society, Jesus won't. Because in this story, you will see a character of Jesus that he deliberately pursued, finds out, seeks, approaches that woman. And that woman did not even have an idea that today is the day. Because all these years, the Samaritan woman lived a rejected life. Culturally, racially, and all the people around her, even gender. So, but Jesus deliberately sought this woman out. I remember the map. He passed Edsa straight to Samaria so that he can have an interaction with this woman. Actually, this is still the first point, but let me encourage you here. If, there's, if you're deeply wounded in rejection, I want to encourage all of us here today, especially some of you here, God will deliberately, continuously, constantly pursue you. Even if you feel like the whole world has rejected you and no one loves you, 
there's the creator of the universe, the king of kings and the lord of lords who will deliberately and constantly, tirelessly tell you that you are loved unconditionally and you are special in his eyes. So that's already alone. This point alone is more than enough we can face this week that because of God's love for you, if no one is pursuing you, no one is giving you much hospitality and acceptance, listen, the one who designed you loves you unconditionally. I want us to remember that. You may feel like, you know, it's the end of the road for you. What a boring, a painful life that you're living. But this one, because he, she is starting to have an interaction with Jesus, <laughs> little does, he know, does she know her life will turn around. Jesus seeks us. In fact, it's not that we sought him. Now, becoming a Christian for many, many years, being a Christian for many, many years, and understanding theology, I realized it's not that I sought him. It's not that I found him. It's the other way around. It's actually Jesus found us. Ikaw ang nahanap. It's not like you were searching for Jesus. No, you weren't. You weren't. It's actually Jesus, at the end of the day, who found you, who searched you. And just like this woman, this woman was clueless. Did she have an idea that one lunchtime when he go, went to the water station that Jesus was there? No, she did not. She wasn't even expecting. Probably she could have given up about God. But yet Jesus sought her. And so for those people who are battling rejection, I want us to understand this truth. Can we be renewed? Yes, we can be renewed. Only when we encounter Jesus. Because this is the character of the God that we worship. Let's continue on. What's the conversation about? In verse 10, Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now Jesus is becoming spiritual. He's about to reveal himself. Jesus at first was asking for a physical drink. But then the woman was shocked. But then... Jesus elevates the conversation and then now he's talking about some spiritual stuff. It's no longer talking about the literal water, but he's talking about the living water, which is him. And so the woman was actually curious and the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? From Manila Water, MWSS, Nawasa? Where do you get that? And then Jesus, so the woman was still focused on the literal water, but Jesus was about to shift gears now, and Jesus was about to transition this woman into letting her know that I can offer you beyond just this water from the well. So the woman said, Sir, are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks on this water will be thirsty again, so he's talking about the will. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Okay, so what did the woman say? Sir, give me this water. If I want this eternal life, I want this eternal life. So give me this water. I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. This is what you call non sequitur. Pampatalino lang. Non sequitur. What do you mean by that? It doesn't connect. The woman was already asking, Give me this water that gives me eternal life. But then Jesus, what did Jesus say? Go call your husband. What's the connection? My husband gave me hell. <laughs> and I don't think it's eternal life. But what's the connection? Why would Jesus connect the most important relationship of this woman to the living water? And we're going to find out what's the connection. Verse 17, Jesus said, The woman answered him, I have no husband. So, if alam naman ni Jesus, Jesus was just fishing. He knows everything, right? So he's trying to draw out something. The woman answered him, <laughs> Close na sila ngayon. 
Jesus naman. Na hindi nga kilala. Ay, kilala ba nga? Dude, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband for you have had five husbands and the one you now have is not your husband but your live-in partner. Did Jesus say that? I said it. (laughs) What you have said is true. Interesting. What do you mean by the conversation? Non-sequitur. Actually, it's non-sequitur. It's actually connected. The woman to compensate on her rejection, was actually filling it up with multiple relationships. Not hindi sabay, but with different relationships. In short, he, she was trying to compensate with love life. Kasi nga, she's been rejected for many, many years. So, so when she encounters a man who loves her, then maybe that can compensate for her rejection, right? But you will see here, Five times already. Five failed relationships. May annulment pala sa, ano? I guess there's divorce. Now we know. But five. So, the connection is, Jesus is offering, make sure I'm the source that can compensate for your rejection. But because the woman obviously did not make Jesus a source yet or hasn't made Jesus a source yet, Jesus mentions the source of the woman where she gets compensation for her rejection and that's why Jesus mentioned the husband. Are we getting that? Why do we need to talk about it? Because let me segue a little bit. When we experience rejection in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, we have two responses. Kasi nga, hurting ke and empty yung heart there's void in our hearts when we have rejection right so we have two responses majority of us will det- attach on something a few of us will detach what do i mean some of us we attach our lives in our career so we really want to climb up the corporate ladder prove ourselves we're successful or maybe as a student Performance. So we attach ourselves in performance, but then when we start di- discovering the motive, why you want to do that and why you're so obsessed be- with becoming successful, you will find out, so that I will be accepted by my family. So that's your source of living water. When we attach ourselves with more money, so that I can prove to, the, to my dad who disowned me, Wrong decision. And thinking money will compensate that. Or maybe it's the material things. You keep on buying new cars, keep on buying new house, keep on buying new watches, all about material things, loaded with brand names to prove so that you will accept me. My office mates will accept me. I'm part of the gang. The rich gang. What else? Social validation. We keep on posting on Facebook, Instagram, so that many people will like. In fact, you keep on posting controversial topics so that for the sake of, millions will share it. We want social validation. So we attach ourselves on these things to compensate on the tank of rejection. In short, the things that I enumerated are actually your sources of living water. What Jesus is actually saying, it's actually not living water. It's actually just tap water. It's a tap water that will run dry after. What if no one likes your Instagram posts anymore? No one, as in zero, negative one. (laughs) What if the corporate ladder is just up to here? What if you were terminated all of a sudden? What if you have lots of money and then it evaporates for some reason? The teller is also dumbfounded. I don't know, sir. (laughs) What if, let's say, the material things just, whatever, it it disappeared. You no longer have money for the material things. So what Jesus is actually saying to the woman, non sequitur, 
your source of living water are actually your failed marriages. Your source of living water is actually your live-in partner now to compensate with the missing link, the tank of rejection. A few of us, we may not attach, but a few of us detach. These are actually those people who are struggling with depression. They want to isolate our, themselves. They detach from the civilization. They detach from the community. They just want to be alone in the room for many months. That's another response called detach. It's important we get to have a big revelation of who Jesus is in our lives. When he said, I am the living water, that means your source of security, your source of value, your source of significance can only come from him, the living water. That's how we grow in our relationship with Jesus. That when we start understanding, he's not just someone who gave us a ticket to heaven, but he's someone who can, like a father, affirms us that your value, your security and significance as a person do not come from the material things, do not come from your career, do not come from your achievements, do not come from social validation, or do not come from people who love you. It only comes from God. So as Christians, it's a good reminder for us that Jesus is our living water. And when we feel rejected, when we feel empty, when we feel at a loss, when we feel insecure, run to Him. He's the living water. He will affirm us that we are His children and we are always special in God's eyes. God will not spare us from rejection. Did you hear what I said? He may not spare us from being rejected in this world. But one thing I'm thankful to God, He has given us a way out so that we can still live a new life if we only attach to Him. Yeah. He's our living water. And that's what He's actually told, telling the, the, the Samaritan woman. So let's continue on. And then the woman said to Him, Ah, sir, now I know you're not just a stranger who's thirsty. I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on the mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem, which is the place where you all, people ought to worship. Again, the history was they had a separate temple. The Samaritans just built their temple, or maybe someone built it for them, so that they will not go to the Jews' temple, temple of God. Because you know, they're disdained and looked down on. So they'd rather just worship God on a separate place. And so again, the question now is the validity of worship. Lumalim ang conversation. I'll tell, explain to us what's the connection there. And in verse 21, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will worship the Father. Will, in Jerusalem, nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews because Jesus is a Jew. But the hour is coming and it's now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship, worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know, ito na, because they always believe that a Savior will come, the Messiah will come. I know that Messiah is coming, He who is called Christ. When He comes, I'm sure he will tell us all things. What did Jesus tell, tell, tell her? I who speak to you am he. What Jesus is actually saying, uh, you're actually speaking to him now. But why will the woman involve the topic of worship? We're talking about rejection here. Now we know the source of the woman. She, she attached herself to love life. But now she's discovering it's Jesus who's the living water. And then the woman asks another question. Is my worship valid? Actually, that's what she's asking. Is my worship valid? I'm a Samaritan. I'm a rejected woman. Is my worship unto the Lord legit even if I don't go to Jerusalem? You know why that's connected? People who are suffering from rejection will always doubt God. 
they will doubt God. Are they welcome in the presence of God? Dadamayan nila si Lord eh. That's the danger of rejection. It starts with a loved one, but then when it brews, it becomes a wound with pus on it. I'm sorry. It aggravates the situation and we start doubting now whether God loves us too. So every time I come here on a Sunday, I know my parents rejected me. You think, Lord, you'll accept me? So there's always that doubt. That's why the, wor- the con- topic of worship always has a connection to those people who are battling with depression. But you know what the good thing about what Jesus said here? What Jesus said here, because I have come. And through me, every worship will be legit. Through me, woman, you will start worshiping God in spirit and in truth. That means every worship of every man or woman from different races and nations, from any cultural background, will always be acceptable to God through and in Jesus. And Jesus draws us to worship God. He doesn't just transition us from rejection. He doesn't just free us from rejection. But He puts us into a place where you'll know, Lord, I'm accepted. Even if my office mates don't love me, even if my boyfriend dumped me, even if my husband left me, I have a perfect husband, Jesus. I am accepted. You're my living water. And not only that, when you start to discover you're accepted, it will enable you to have a passionate, growing relationship with God that will make our worship and actually satisfying, I'm sorry to say that word, fulfilling. You know that your worship and your life is acceptable in the eyes of God because of what Christ has done. You know what this woman did after? See, when she discovers who this Jesus is, and maybe aside from her husband, this is the man, the only Jewish man who talked to, him, to her, she started sharing Jesus to her community. And the whole community of, sorry to say this, the whole community of rejects, like us, the whole community of rejects were shocked and they started believing in Jesus too. Actually, God loves the rejects. Thank you, Lord, I'm a reject. And I'm grateful that my God accepts me for who I am. Are you glad tonight God accepts you for who you are? When we discover that, then we can start to start living a life. Yes, Adele, I saw that. We can still worship God, but then we can now experience the series name called Renew. Then I can start living a life of not just smiling all the time, not just living a life of hope, but start living a new life. A life that does not attach itself on material things, social validation, community acceptance, or uh, cars, career, Ah, all this stuff, when we attach ourselves to these achievements and thinking it will up our value, you don't have to. Let me tell you, Jesus came and the fact that Jesus came is already a reminder that your value is here. Not here, I'm short. It reaches eternity. It has no price tag. Look at the person beside you. That person is so very much confirmed special and valuable in the eyes of God and no one can dictate your price. You're accepted. That's what Jesus did to this woman. That's why we can live a life that's renewed. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I don't have to say much more because all of us can relate to this. When we feel rejected, go to the living water, Jesus Christ. When we feel rejected, before what we do, when we feel rejected, okay, where's the next expensive? I need to go to the Rolex store tomorrow now. (laughs) 
when I feel rejected, man, tomorrow, I need to go to the car store, Aston Martin, I need to buy something again. Oh, tomorrow, I need to climb the corporate ladder again. Kasi nga, yun yung living water natin eh. But what Jesus is actually saying, it will not compensate for our rejection. You will still be in pain. But when you start feeling and experiencing the love of God, only Jesus can, when we attach our lives on Jesus, we can live a life that's renewed. I want us to stand. I'm going to ask Mark to come up here. I want us to sing that song again. Here's a practical thing for us. Every time we feel rejected, because I know I feel rejected too. I feel rejected too, at times. I'm sure you do also, all of us. Here's a practical application for us to be able to continuously experience a renewed life. Pray and remind yourself every day. Sample prayers like this. Lord, as you start the day or probably as you end the night, Sample prayers like this, Lord, please assure me again that I am accepted. Even if I feel rejected, Lord, I know there's pain in my heart, but Lord, I come to you now. You are my living water. And you will remind me again that I am your son and I am your daughter. And I'm reminding myself, Lord, it's not the things that will compensate for my rejection. Lord, I am acknowledging you will compensate for my rejection. And so as I pray to you, Lord, that you will assure me I am special. I am valuable. No one can dictate my value. Something like that. Remind yourself and pray every day as you start this week. The second one is this. Read and meditate on His Word. Read Psalm 23. Read Psalm 27. Read Psalm 34. All the precious promises. Remind yourself. And gradually, we can start experiencing the healing of rejection. And some of us, release the bitterness. Release unforgiveness. Release that. And as you pray, Lord, you've already accepted me. And what more can I ask for? If the King of Kings have already accepted you, what more can you ask for? Then we can start loving people too. Bow down your heads with me. Lord, I pray that you will assure us tonight, Lord, that we can be free and be healed and recover from this wound called rejection. Jesus, you are the living water. We are accepted. We're no longer forsaken. We're loved unconditionally. We've been shown kindness. We've been shown grace. And that's, Lord, as we, you know, as we continue to walk with you, Lord, help us discover that you are that God who loves us so much that you accept the rejects like us. And that our value, it's actually priceless. It's priceless. Because you're the only one who created us and can dictate that value. So thank you, Lord. Let your word be deeply rooted in our hearts. And whatever our situation is, we can have a greater encounter with you. Powerful encounter with you. Just like that Samaritan woman. In Jesus' name, let's sing that song. I'm forgiven. Because you are forsaken, I'm accepted, you are condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Sing it one more time. I'm forgiven. You are forsaken. I'm accepted. You are condemned. I'm alive and well. The Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love. Amazing love.
was doing one-to-one with someone in the past and he was growing in his relationship with God and all of a sudden para nag open he opened up something and he said you know Pat I'm thankful to God now because I don't have to please anyone before when I wasn't growing as a Christian I would try to please everybody I will buy this I will do that But then I start to realize there's only one person I need to please, and he's already pleased with me, and that's God. And so he shared that to me. I said, wow, truly Jesus is, the gospel is growing in your life. And I kept on encouraging him. And I share that simple story to us because that's my hope for each one of us as we leave this place. We don't have to please anyone. Nothing to prove, nothing to lose. Why? Because Jesus already paid for us. Jesus is already in our lives. God loves us because of what Christ has done. So I want us to come out here confident and secure. If you have Jesus in your life, you have every reason to be secure and confident. Amen? This coming week, I want us to be content, confident, secure. Bless your word. Bless us even as we go home, Lord. Thank you. We're no longer rejected. But we are accepted because of what you've done for us, Lord Jesus. So let this week be a fruitful week for us. A week of knowing you more, discovering your goodness and your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.